Hey guys, it's me, Cubix. We haven't really talked in a while, and that's because I've been super, super busy at work. I had a few deadlines that I had to make recently, um, and I haven't slept in like three weeks, so that's where I've been. I'm actually on campus right now um, in the building that I work in. It's currently dead week, which is the week before a final exam, so there aren't really any students around, and there's certainly no one in this auditorium. At first, I was actually gonna walk around campus and show you guys around. I figured at this point, I didn't really care if people saw me with a camera, uh, but in fact, that's false. I'm still very self-conscious about that, so I decided not to do that. So in one of my recent videos, I think it was the real or fake uh, episode four, I was asking you guys to leave questions for me to answer, and I didn't want questions that just involved one answer. I wanted questions that sort of invoked dedicated videos because they were a little bit complicated to explain, or they were just questions that really needed an opinion. And I figured I'd start out the series with one of the most common questions I get all the time, which is, how do I balance cubing in school? And seeing as I've been really busy with work recently, I figured now was as good a time as any to answer that question. So for me personally, it has never really been that difficult of a decision. I personally really like school, and so choosing between school and cubing was not really that difficult. I didn't feel like I was giving up anything in order to do something that I didn't like. It was more of just like choosing between two hobbies. But I know for a lot of you, school really isn't that fun, whereas cubing is super up there, and so it might be a little bit difficult to choose between what you have to do versus what you want to do. Now, I know a lot of you have different values on education, and those might be different than mine, so I'm not here to impose my values onto you, but I will say that I think a basic education is really important important for all walks of life no matter what you want to do after high school or college I think making the most of your education is actually super valuable so the short answer to this question I think is if you have to do school you should just do school right you shouldn't try to minimize your efforts on doing schoolwork so that you can maximize the amount of time you can solving a cube. I think the truth of the matter is and this is probably something that you don't necessarily want to hear but it's just the honest truth School is going to get you a lot further in life than cubing is. If you want to take the most extreme cases, the world-class cubers do not cube 24-7. A lot of them are in college, some of them are still in high school, but they don't cube all day. They, In fact, a lot of them are super, super talented in many, many areas um, and are pursuing a lot of really cool things outside of cubing. So I know that that's not necessarily the answer you wanted to hear because you want to just cube all day, but that's just realistically not feasible and it's not good for you. Um, it is really nice to have a good education and you should feel very fortunate that you're able to get the education that you are currently having. There's of course multiple layers to this, right? Because it's not always so easy to say like, oh, I'm just never gonna cube and just focus on school for like two weeks. I know that's difficult. So one of the things that you can do if you want to sort of wean off of it or if you just want to pace yourself is give yourself some goals. Let's say you have to do some reading, like you have to read a paper or maybe you have to write an essay. Maybe after each paragraph you can do a couple solves. Um, things like that where you can sort of pace yourself so that like every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes you can take a short break, get some cubing in, and then go back to school or work or whatever it is that you have to do. I think what's really dangerous is if you tell yourself that you're going to do like an average of 100 and then do work after because an average of 100, especially if you're a little bit slower at cubing, could take like an hour or two. And at that point, you may just lose motivation to do work altogether. So I think the key to balancing school and cubing is you always just do school first, and then you do cubing after. And how much of an extreme you want to divvy those things up is sort of up to you. But that's sort of the general guideline that I would go with. So for me personally, it was very much a 100 and zero kind of thing. I literally did only school for a few years and didn't cube at all for three or four years. Um, but then for others, um, what might work better is let's say you do school for like 30 minutes and then you cube for 10 minutes and then you sort of alternate like that. And you know, whatever works for you is fine. But I think ultimately you just have to make sure that what needs to be done is your priority and then what you can do or what you want to do is sort of like a nice treat that comes after. So hopefully that answers that question for all of you who have asked me over the years. I am going to answer a lot more of your questions, so if you have any other questions that you want me to answer, please leave them in the comments below, and I might pick one for the next video. But with that, guys, I'm going to go find something to eat, and I will see you next time. Toodles. Oh, also, please follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm trying to get like 2,000 followers so that I can tell people I'm an Instagram model.